Another test today of Donald Trump's hold on GOP voters. It is primary day in two states. Let's start in Alaska. Lisa Murkowski, the only Republican senator up for re-election this year who voted to convict the former president after a second impeachment, faces Trump back challenger Kelly Shibaka. Former Alaska governor and vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin is hoping for a political comeback in her bid for the state's lone U.S. House seat. And in Wyoming, Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who voted to impeach Donald Trump and is vice chair of the January 6th committee, is in a tough battle against Trump-endorsed challenger Harriet Hageman. Let's bring in CNN's Jeff Zeleny. He's in Wilson, Wyoming. So, Jeff, what are you hearing from voters there? We are hearing that Congressman Liz Cheney voted a short time ago at the county library in Jackson, uh, choosing not to cast her ballot here at her neighborhood, a polling location where a lot of residents and uh, a lot of media, frankly, were uh, expecting that she would. So clearly trying to um, avoid that traditional uh, election day photo opportunity, saving her only public appearance for her event this evening. But talking to so many voters here, uh, supporters of Liz Cheney know that this is an uphill battle. She knows this is an uphill battle. We've talked a lot about Democrats and independents crossing over to support her. We've also met several Republican voters who say they proudly stand behind her, including John Grant, who casted his ballot here today. It certainly is a tough race for Liz. Uh, I've been a supporter of uh, her for quite some time, and uh, I wish her the best. I think she uh, does a good job. I think she works hard at what she does. I think she stood up for what she believes in. I mean, it, it took a lot of courage to stand up and, and uh, step against the Republican, or Donald Trump, and, um, and the, yeah, the Republicans in general, so. But clearly, that is a Republican who said he's frankly fed up with Donald Trump and wants the party to move on. That simply has not happened. A long string of primaries throughout the summer has made one thing clear. This is still Donald Trump's Republican Party. And there's no contest in the country throughout the year that has been more important to him than winning than here in Wyoming. He's endorsed Harriet Hageman, a longtime lawyer here in Wyoming, who certainly has a commanding lead going into Election Day against Liz Cheney. So we will see what happens for the remaining hours of voting here. But even uh, folks in, in the Cheney orbit are already looking to her next steps. And we will, I'm told, get a sense of what that may be in a speech she's giving here tonight. Thank you, right. Allison. Jeff Zeleny for us there in Wilson, Wyoming. Thank you. Let's bring in Scott Jennings, former special assistant to President George W. Bush, also CNN political commentator Charlie Dent, a former Republican congressman from Pennsylvania. Commentators vote. Uh, good to have you. And, Congressman, let me start with you. Um, today's not the day for for polling in the race. We'll let the voters vote and we'll see what the outcome is. But what will you be looking for beyond a simple win-loss in this race in Wyoming? Well, look, I mean, everybody's anticipating that Liz Cheney's going to come up short uh, tonight. Uh, but I think really what we're all anticipating here, see, one, what the margin of victory is. Uh, and two, you know, what will Liz do next? Uh, she is clearly, um, she has mobilized a lot of Republicans. Look, clearly, Trump controls the party. But I would have to guess there's somewhere between 20 to 30 percent of Republicans who want a different direction. And Liz has really set herself up to be the leader of that faction within the party. And of course, my hope is that faction will grow over time uh, to challenge uh, the Trump wing of the party. So I really think that's what we're looking at. What's her next step? You know, what, what, what does she do next? Does she run for president? Or does she mobilize like Adam Kinzinger is doing as well? They're trying to rally troops uh, to develop a, a, a broader uh, coalition of Republicans who want a new direction. So we won't share polling uh, today, but indulge me, Scott, while we do share a little math. Let's look at the demographic breakdown, okay, of Wyoming and just explain the math here. So today, as of today, here's who is registered. 75% of the state is registered Republican. Only 13% of the state registered Democrat. 12% is independent or other. However, you know there is this phenomenon where Democrats have been registering as Republican in order to vote for Liz Cheney. And if Charlie Dent's math is right, the 20 to 30% of the original Republicans would vote for Liz Cheney. Is there a path here for her? I mean, it's highly unlikely. I mean, there's so many uh, longtime Republicans in Wyoming who support Donald Trump and now see most of these races as nationalized, right? And, and that's really one of the things she's facing. I think she's been, uh, objectively speaking, a good congressman for Wyoming in terms of what you do as a congressman. 
uh, but these races have become so nationalized and it's turned on her uh, kind of taking on one mission, and that's to be the leader of the opposition to Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Most Republicans don't feel the way she does, ergo where she sits today. So I, I doubt it. Uh, I'm like Charlie. I'm looking at the margin tonight to see how that math works out. I'm not anticipating her winning, but I am curious about how many Democrats crossed over. And, you know, I worked in the Bush-Cheney White House. I find it quite shocking now that Democrats are all pro-Cheney. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when they were trying to throw Dick Cheney in the war crimes jail <laughs> several years ago, and now we have Democrats showing up to vote for a Cheney. It's, it's quite stunning to me. Hmm. Congressman, let's go to Alaska and this, um, this Senate race. Uh, Lisa Murkowski, she's the only Republican who voted to convict uh, the former president uh, after his impeachment uh, in 2021. She's on the ballot. Um, we know the record for those 10 House Republicans. Um, seven will not be back. Two have a shot at it. And, of course, Liz Cheney is the 10th. You think that Senator Murkowski has a better shot, a clearer path to uh, coming back uh, in 2023? Yeah, I actually do think she has a very good chance of coming back. She uh, she will advance tonight um, in Alaska with this ranked choice voting system. She will advance, so she's not going to lose a primary. So she will be on the ballot in the fall. Now, we have to see, you know, who else breaks through here uh, just to, to, to handicap what might happen in the fall. But I think she is well positioned to win again. You may remember that she defeated a Tea Party favorite several years ago. She yep. lost the primary to a guy named Miller and then turned around and ran a write-in campaign and defeated him in the general election. I'll tell you what, that takes a lot of skill and effort. And so I would not underestimate her political skills. Uh, she, is a, she, is very, she is very shrewd, and I would expect her to run an effective campaign in the fall. I'm not saying that's going to guarantee a win, but if anybody's going to pull it out, she will. And she's really become a, a good voice for more centrist politics, not only in the Senate, but within the country and certainly within the Republican Party. Scott, quickly, let's stay in Alaska. What do you think um, Sarah Palin's chances are in this House seat? Uh, pretty good. I, I expect her to do quite well. Um, although, you know, there are some detractors of her because of the way she left the governor's office and then ultimately left Alaska. But I expect she has a, a good chance. So my anticipation is, is that both Murkowski, as Charlie said, and Palin are going to be well positioned uh, after tonight's voting. One more for you, Congressman. Um, and this is a general election race in, in your home state of Pennsylvania. Um, did we lose the congressman right when he I heard got what to? you Because he knew what you were going to ask, and he was like, no, oh, thank you. Congressman. I, but I still, go ahead. I, yeah, let's take it to Scott. Continue, because let's, it's still let's see a good if, question. If, if Scott, do we have Scott with us? I'm here, yeah. All right, good. Scott, <laughs> let me come to you with it. You're not a Pennsylvanian, but let's hear you out on it. Um, this race between uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Fetterman and Dr. Oz, where Fetterman is trolling Dr. Oz online. We saw the Snooky element um, uh, connecting Oz to New Jersey. And then there's this grocery store trip that Oz took. Here's a bit of it that Fetterman's highlighting. I'm going to do some grocery shopping. I'm at Wegner's, and uh, my wife wants some vegetables for crudite. Well, the grocery store chain is called Wegmans. Um, not Wegner's, and uh, Federman's team trolled him by saying, we call that a veggie tray. Um, how does this resonate, you think? Well, this video was made back in the spring. I'm not quite sure why it's got new life here uh, in August, but this is, the, this is the core issue of this race. The Republicans want to make it a national race about inflation and Joe Biden and direction of the country, and the Democrats want to make it about Dr. Oz specifically, you know, kind of localize the race about the attributes of his particular candidacy. And so my suspicion is, is that um, you're going to see Fetterman continue to try to talk about anything but, you know, uh, the national issues. And you're going to see Oz do just the opposite. I will tell you this, for Republicans nationally, the path to 51 in the Senate runs through Pennsylvania. So this is, a, in my opinion, a must-win race for the Republican Party. So I think you're going to see them all in. And, uh, and both parties, uh, this is like ground zero for Senate control, in my opinion. Charlie, we only have 10 seconds. Do you have some thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, look, th this race is going to be very competitive at the end of the day. We have two candidates. You know, uh, the, the Republicans are going to paint Fetterman uh, as a Bernie Sanders, Democratic Socialist, anti-fracking, you know, soft on crime. And, of course, Fetterman is just going to continue to pound uh, Oz on his residency issue and this little uh, crudite situation didn't help matters, but that won't be much going forward. I thought crudite, yeah. I thought it was crudite. It's like kryptonite. I never heard of crudite. <laughs> Y'all call it a veggie it's, tray. It's, I get it. I get it. It's, it's, it's veggie tray. Yeah. Red, red, there's Redners and Wagners. He screwed up the name. He called it Wagner, yeah. Wagners, I think. That's right.
Is that but the, the okay. problem? The crew to take, we'll leave the crew to take controversy here. Uh, Charlie Dent, Scott Jennings, thank you very much. Thank you both.